So I am adding Arohi Jire too. He has just texted us on the chat. We already Excellent. have Rupeshri. Okay. Just the two. Is there anyone else who wants to participate? Hello. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Rupashi. Hi. Do you remember? What did did we meet in Pune? No, in Bangalore, Russia, Mr. Stay. Oh, Rupa, nice. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> Good. Good. Can you put your video on so I can see you? Yeah, yeah. It's not being an option. I'm not. I'm not getting an option to put my video on. Uh, just a second, Rupa. Oh, okay. Just a second. Just a second. Yeah. Oh, okay. wonderful. Yeah, Rupa. It's been a while, but we we first met, I think, eleven years ago. Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. There you are. Hi, nice to see you. Namaste. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm so glad you. Long time I couldn't meet. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Good. Are you keeping well? Yes. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Yeah. And how about you, um, Arohi? Are you with us? Can you switch your video on? Hello. Hi, welcome. Welcome. Nice to yeah. see you. And, and, and where are you? Are you in Pune? Yep. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you came. So we'll start, we'll start playing some games, I guess, the three of us. And then as others come, they're welcome to join in. Okay. Um, yeah, and then and uh, and Priyal and Bhagyashi are also welcome to join if you'd like. So I want you to look around the space where you are and um, and grab an item that's colorful and show it to your webcam. You got something colorful, Rupa? All right, now we're gonna switch it up. Um, grab something white. Ah, there's your colorful thing. <laughs> Do you have something white? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and now grab something useful. <laughs> Excellent. Now, uh, we'll all go around and introduce, introduce ourselves uh, and introduce your object that's useful. So this is a foot-shaped paper clip. Uh, it's useful for handouts and whatnot. And I'm Evan. I'm a theater artist and drama therapist. I live in currently live in New Zealand, um, but uh, strong affinity with India. I'm an overseas citizen of India, and um, and I'm I'm ho your host today. How about you, Rupa? Will you introduce yourself? Oh, can you turn your mic on? Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Rupa. Um, I'm, I come from the background of NGO. I worked with kids for almost like 15 years now. And uh, I know Ivan when we worked together for two, three workshops on theater with kids. And uh, that was wonderful with movements. <laughs> so I'm more interested in bodily learning, uh, which really connects with us in every moment with what we do, like internally and out 
like externally. So that's why I'm here. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Great, welcome. And you, Arohi? Oh, hi. So uh, I'm a student currently and I am uh, pursuing my bachelor's in psychology. And along with that, I have been doing a little theater workshops, little um, dramas here and there in school or in or on other platforms. So this was a perfect um, topic for me, considering both of them are the topics I'm I'm passionate about. Sweet. I'm glad to have you here with us. Now make your hands free and with your right hand make an X and with your left hand make an O at the same time. <laughs> now do the O in the other direction. <laughs> now ulta. X with the left hand, O with the right hand. <laughs> and if it's too easy, write your name on the floor with your foot at the same time. All right, and relax, relax. <laughs> stretches us a bit. And I think that this whole idea of doing drama therapy online, it really does stretch us a bit. Um, but I think that the, the pandemic actually stretches us a bit too, doesn't it? Yes. And so, uh, so I'm hoping that, uh, that we can kind of connect and find a way to still experience some of this stuff, um, even given the current hardships and given the, you know, the fact that it's not quite as good as being face-to-face -face in person. Um, so I'm going to say, when I say yes, you say no. Yes. No. How about you, Ari? Yeah, I was on mute, sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. When I say yes, you say no. Yes. No. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. Oh. No. <laughs> when I say stop, you say go. Stop. Go. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. No. Go. go. Yes. No. Stop. Go. Go. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Stop. Yes. Go. Go. No. Fast. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. You got it. <laughs> um, so with with the uh, with drama therapy it's really important that we uh, become playful and that we allow ourselves to be silly and that we spend the time to kind of connect and play with each other without too much um, like judgment or reflection at first so that we feel free. And then as we feel free, we can then also move deeper into what we explore, right? So if I... Um, so, do you know Simon Says? No. Yeah. Okay, Rupa doesn't know. No. Right, so if, I, if I say everything I do, it's uh, because Simon Says, right? So if I say, Simon Says, touch your nose, then, then we all have to touch okay. our nose, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Simon Says, raise your hand. Put your hand down. Huh, but Simon didn't say, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> So that's, that's that game, but uh, we'll play a cooperative version, which is yeah, let's. So I'll suggest something, and then we'll just do the thing that I suggested until one of you suggests something else. And then we switch to your idea, and we keep going until somebody else suggests something else. So whenever somebody suggests something new, the three of us will say, yeah, let's, and then we join. Um, let's rock back and forth. Then you two would say, yeah, let's. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's. All right, cool. So we'll rock back and forth. And now we keep rocking until one of you suggests something else. Let's. 
uh, drink some water. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Let's come in really close to the camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's. Let's jump a bit. Yeah, let's. Let's move in slow motion. And let's end the game. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so what makes a game fun? <laughs> that I can also um, like insist I want to do something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have some uh, power and control oh, in the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much for you, Arohi? What makes a game fun? Uh... I don't know, it, uh, maybe less complicated games are more fun. Yeah. You know, when so you, you don't have to think a lot or... Yeah, you have to think a lot or argue about the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so think about how you felt when you first volunteered. Um, to kind of play the games. And how does it feel now after we've played a couple of games? I guess uh, it's more comfortable now. Hmm. I feel that too. Why do you think that is? I, yeah, I feel that it's refreshing. Like, you know, it's an energizer. Yep. Um, and uh, it makes me, like, uh, get into the mode now. <laughs> and now I'm into drama theater. <laughs> that's what I feel. Yeah, and that was, and that's just a few minutes yeah. um, that we've been playing. And we'll keep, we'll keep playing. But I think it's really important to stop and reflect here because, um, not every therapeutic benefit of drama therapy is so profound. Like not everything is about going into the deep pain and trying to change it. Like sometimes just feeling lighter, feeling more comfortable, feeling connected, feeling more focused. These are, these are all um, important therapeutic benefits of drama. And with some, with some groups and some individuals in drama therapy, you'll get to do really deep work. But a lot, of, a lot of times that deep work, just like in many forms of psychotherapy, it happens over a period of time through a strong relationship, right? Um, and that build, you build that bond of trust and everything. Well, the theater allows us to do that, but also let's be realistic about how much we can really do in one hour, right? So I'm just going to introduce you to some, to some of these elements of, of drama therapy and some of these uh, initial therapeutic benefits that might seem like the lighter ones are still quite good. And even if you're able to kind of achieve these things with the group, I think that is, that is success. I know I remember as a, as a young um, kind of drama therapist starting out, I thought like if you got people to cry or like share some deep personal pain, that that was like success, right? <laughs> but now, now I realize there's a lot more to it than that and that, that it's that actually playing with the layers and get getting into the dynamics of our relationships um can be really meaningful and therapeutic as well um all right the three of us are going to play another game now we're going to try and get our group focus on so we're going to count to 20 together as a group um and one person's going to say one someone else will say two someone else will say three 
Uh, but if two people say the number at the same time, we have to start again at zero. Okay. okay. All right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right. One. Two. Three. Four. Four. Oh. All right. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Six. <laughs> One. Two, three, four, five, six, six. <laughs> one, two, three. Four. Four. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Let's get that focus on. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Six. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen. <laughs> All right, we'll stop there. Good. Uh, I think the lag time makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, so, have you played that game before in a group? No. 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 It's, it's, it's lovely. Like, I think it's almost easier with three people than it is with a larger group. But the great thing is that it, it forces us to slow down and really listen and like be aware of kind of our space within the group. But it does that without us having to think about the fact that that's what we're doing. So again, we're built, it's, we're working with group dynamics, but we're not um, stating it. It's all just in the form of a game. So I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to share screen now with you for a minute and show you some of the um, some of the theories that we're working with and then we'll and then we'll go back in and play a few more games so I'll sh if i show you my desktop can you see the slide yes we can okay awesome awesome so um, so drama therapy, uh, as, as you probably read when you signed up, right? It's, we're intentionally using drama and theater processes for, um, therapeutic ends. And it's, it's an active, it's an experiential approach and it's about facilitating transformation and change. Right? And this drama therapy, um, has roots in a lot of different fields, further it's psychotherapy um, psychiatric care or theater, we draw from, from all of that. I've highlighted the bits that are the, the ones that I particularly draw from. But I think this slide's important to understand that uh, while drama therapy might be seen as a relatively new field, um, I guess theater artists and, um, and shamans and other performing artists in different cultures around the world have, have always played um, a role 
I guess, in mediating uh, trauma and change for communities and societies. Uh, but then also within kind of a Western academic framework, you can see here um, where, it, where it starts from. So the theoretical orientation that I want to show you specifically in this workshop is the five phase model from Rene Amuna, right? And just like how we started out this workshop, it's all about connect before content. We have to build those relationships and connections with one another before we do anything else. And that's how we become engaged. Like I learn 0% of what happens when I'm not engaged. Um, so in order to create those connections to grow and change, we engage in dramatic play, which is all about playing games, inviting spontaneity. We develop trust as a group. We build our group dynamic, um, which enables us to kind of get into another phase, phase two of work in the five phase model, which is scene work. And in scene work, we're able to do some role play. We sustain our active imagination, um, but we're not analyzing what we do. We're reflecting on it, um, but it's not like a, a critical analysis. It's not, okay, what did it mean that I took on this role? We're not doing that type of reflection yet because that still makes us more self-conscious. But once those, those reflections start to come naturally from the group, then the group is signaling that it's, it's ready to kind of transition towards the third phase, which is um, working with role plays that have real life themes. And here we start to break some of our own behavioral patterns and try out new ways of being in the world. Um, and that third phase, uh, there's a lot of work that can happen there in terms of um, creating therapeutic change and growth and, um, the fourth phase is a culminating enactment, which, which is also similar to um, psychodrama, but it could also be a self-revelatory performance or a sociodrama. In psychodrama, the, the therapeutic goals are uh, about catharsis and insight, right? And some of, some of the work is not just working on what's, what you are consciously aware of, but there's subconscious themes that will emerge and come out in that work. And this, this becomes, um, something that really draws on the work that you did in the previous three phases. Uh, and the fifth phase is a dramatic ritual, which is where we kind of close everything and bring it back together. Um, we, we integrate the change um, that we've experienced, kind of like the end of the hero's journey when you return home. So in, with that dramatic ritual, we integrate it before we enter back into kind of life as we know it. Now, the reason why these are called phases and not stages is because they're not necessarily linear. You don't always progress uh, from one to five. And the goal is not to try and get um, from, to, through all the phases, right? Like maybe like in this one hour example, maybe we'll do some dramatic play and, uh, and begin to do some, some longer play and get into scene work a little bit. That would... Um, that would just be the you know, stages one and two or whatever. And then we'll reflect and close. So we'll do a little bit of phase five. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's not linear. It's not mandatory that you do all of them. And I think, like, as, as I had said before, just starting, starting out, you might think that the goal is just to go straight for that deep one, that psychodrama, right? Like, I think a lot of people think the goals of psychotherapy are about catharsis and insight, releasing the emotion, realizing something about yourself. But there's a lot of other benefits that come from becoming more connected with one another. Our, our problems don't exist uh, in a vacuum under ourselves. A lot of our problems exist in the context of our relationships and in our families and in our friendships and in our workplaces. And so being able to do drama therapy in a group and work on group dynamics in the way that we are with others can help us navigate the issues that we face otherwise in other social situations um, and family and other relationships in our life. Um, whereas um, the psychodrama, you know, it's, it's kind of a deeper individual um, work. But again, you can swap out that culminating enactment for um, something more sociodramatic. I can see that quickly we're getting questions. So I'm gonna stop the screen share pop back in here with you and, um, and check out what we've got. 
So were there, are there any, are there any questions? No. You can feel free to drop questions in the um, question thing below. And also you're welcome to, um, to say anything with the, um, in the chat as well. And is there a raised hand? No. No. Okay. No, that's okay. I guess we will carry on. I got prompted saying that there was a raised hand. So now I'm going to invite um, Arohi and Rupashree to put your videos back on. And if there's anyone else who'd like to join us, we're going to do a few more uh, example activities to illustrate some of these drama therapy principles um, and then discuss it a little bit further. Yes, we have one. We have a question, which is what exactly happens in a drama therapy session? Good question. And I think that that, that differs depending on what is the uh, theoretical orientation of the drama therapist, what method they're using. So um, a drama therapy session could involve the use of masks or puppets, um, theater games. You can work with scripts and stories. Um, some people just work with uh, body-based improv and sound and movement. In the five-phase model um, th that I'm sharing with you, um, a drama therapy session will most likely start with uh, some type of warm-up or games that get us connected and playing with each other. And then we'll move into some, um, some scene work that we were able to go a little bit deeper and perhaps uh, move towards working with themes that are close to us. And then, and then at the end, we kind of reflect on what happened and close in an intentional way. Um, and um, if, anyone, if any of you want to join in, um, you can either kind of raise your hand or volunteer in the chat. And we'll do another round now of, uh, of examples to kind of let you see the kind of things that might happen in a drama therapy workshop. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm not able to put my video on. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe the um, just a second. Co hosts can help you with that. Yeah. Thanks for saying that, Rupa. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. At the most fundamental level, um, if, if there's no movement, there's no dance. If there's no sound, there's no music. And if there's no conflict, there's no drama. So when it comes to working with scene work, it's really all about, um, about these conflicts, right? But it's not just how you, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. So if I say, a, it's really different than if I say, A, what other meaning can you get out of the sound A? A. Yeah. Uh, A. 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 Yay. <laughs> How about ooh? What meaning can you get from ooh? Um, uh, mm. Sometimes it's wow. It can be. Ooh. Like cool, sort of. Ooh. Yeah. How about E? Tired. E? Maybe. Um, now, what if it was a word? How about the word yes? What different ways can you say the word yes that have different meanings? Yes. <laughs> but you know, just nod your head for someone else's response, you know. 
Yes. 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 That's what my kid does when when uh, she gets more time to play. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> and how about how about no? No. Oh. It's the first no. No 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 no. <laughs> No. No. It's like one one. No. And you are tired and no. God no. <laughs> so it looks like there's a lot of different there's a lot of different way, meanings that we get out of it. And so uh, so it really isn't just what we're saying. It's, it fully is how we say it, right? And I think that when we talk about things like good touch and bad touch or street sexual harassment, right? We would say, well, no means no. But I think the three of us just proved that wrong. It means a lot of different things, doesn't it? It depends how you're saying it, your facial expression, your body language, everything. Which means that we actually need to have a more... Um, a deeper understanding of, of how we interact with each other, other than just like the word means this. Yeah. So we have to really pay attention to each other and kind of get each other. Um, so now uh, we're going to have a conversation using only the words yes and no. All right. So Arohi, it's going to be between uh, you and Rupa. And Arohi, you're going to say yes. Rupa, you're going to say no. And you're going to talk for a minute straight, but you only use that one dialogue and you have to try and convince the other person. All right, ready? <laughs> Begin. Yes. No. Y yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. And now switch. So now you're saying the other word. Yes. No. Yes. No, no. no. Yes, 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 yes. No. Uh. Yes. Nope. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes, yes, yes. No. Yes. And yes. pause. <laughs> now, notice yourself. Was one of the words easier for you to say than the other? No one, no one's more, more easier than yes. <laughs> yeah, same for me. Same for you. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then, so now we're playing, right? We're in scene work. But once it, it gets like this, it can even be role play, right? And we could reflect. So like, what does it, what do you think it says about you that it's easier to say no than yes? Or like, why do you think it is that it feels more natural to say no? I say more, I say no more often than yes, usually. Uh, for me, I feel uh, no is something that you can just, it's just a reflection. A is something that you have to please someone or you know you have to make the other person say okay <laughs> so it's hard that you have to go down you know please someone and then <laughs> that's what i feel yeah thanks thanks for sharing 
and um and we could and we could go deeper right we could think about like you know why the, like what are the things why we say yes why we say no but i would just for the sake of demonstration i think we'll keep playing a little bit and look at another one so oh and we also have maybe the length of the word matters yeah that's that's a good thought too so now rupa you and i are going to do one um and this time we'll do roles so one of us will be the parent and the other one will be the child. Okay. And the child is um, asking for something, but the parent doesn't want to give. No, I've already given you too much. No, no, it's enough. All right. So which one do you want to be, Rupa? Do you want to be the parent or the child? Uh, anything. I'm okay with anything. You're okay with anything? Okay, well, you liked... The saying no, so you be the parent okay. and I'll be the child. Okay. Okay. I think we have played this once. We would have played this, I think, so we played this one. <laughs> Please, mommy, can I have one more? No. I just want one chocolate, mommy. Just no. one. No. You never give me chocolate. That's okay. But you can't have. I finished finish all my homework and I was good and I just want one chocolate. No, my sweet dad. No. Please. No. Please. No. <laughs> good. Now let's switch. Okay. All right. Yeah, you, you ask for something and I'll be the parent. So you're my dad now. What is it? You are my dad now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Daddy, can I just play four more time? Oh, I know you're having fun, but I think that's enough for tonight. Uh, one, one more, uh, that's all. It's always good to, to want to want more but it's also good to know when to stop and we've had quite enough but we'll stop now and then we'll have more play to do another day but i'll definitely stop after an hour please come on please no we won't do any more now but we'll do it next time why not this time and <laughs> Good, nice and persistent. <laughs> so, now, so now we're getting into conflicts that could potentially be closer to home, right? Parent and child um, thing, it becomes primary. And if we keep going, you'll start to see our behavior patterns come out and how we interact with each other, right? You'll start to see, what do I do? Do I manipulate? Do I, do, do I try and do some drama to get you to do my way? And, and um, but again, we don't necessarily have to analyze it first. Like we can just kind of play and notice ourselves and, um, and we can work things out. You, you, you know, a lot of kids play this way on their own naturally. Like they have that imagination and they, they role play and they, you know, and they get through all the problems and it, they often repeat things that are happening at home and they work it out in the play, but it's good for them. And they, they're able to resolve some of the things they're going through and they don't, and they don't necessarily need to um, interpret it or analyze what happened, right? And that's the, that's the benefit of these earlier um, phases of the five phase model is you get that therapeutic benefit even without analyzing what you're doing, right? I could see myself in the way, in my relationship to conflict in the way I was role playing that with you, Rupa. <laughs> I was, I was aware of myself and that, that awareness that um, it's both pretend and that bits of it are kind of real for me at the same time. That's one of the benefits of drama therapy, that, um, that dual awareness. So um, how do you feel now? Um, more energetic maybe. Mm. And it's more interesting. Like the more conversation goes on, it's more interesting and more things comes up. Yeah. 
And you are here? Yeah, same for me, I guess. Yeah, good. Now, at this point, like because we're scheduled to be done in eight minutes, so it's a responsible thing for me is to not start any new games. Because if I start opening more things now or going deeper now, then maybe something too deep comes up and then we run out of time. So it's actually better to, to, to now take time and close. Like I was talking about with the fifth phase, like we always integrate and reflect on our experience and make sure that we close. And that's, um, you know, in psychotherapy, you talk about the container, right? So it's, it's about the, the kind of boundaries and the limits and the consistency around that, which you do from one session to another that gives a sense of structure and safety um, and reliability over time, right? So even though I do have more things planned, I think I will be responsible and we'll stop here. Um, and, and I hope that this gives you some insight into, into drama therapy. Um, let's, let's now reflect on, um, on drama therapy in general. Like, are there, any, are there any questions that you have or thoughts that remain from this webinar today? I have a question. Yeah. Um, like even though we use this uh, drama therapies and we push, I'm talking as a kid. For a kid, even though uh, there are uh, many ways that we can help them in opening up their fear or their anxiety or uh, all that things, but still, when uh, when they come in front of uh, when they are on stage or they have to perform in uh, some of the stage fear or uh, the fear that people might take me wrong or they might go and say something all that sort of uh, bundle of fears that they have so how can we help kids to overcome that like you know uh, i understand first thing is trust that they should trust us uh, but still trust is not that easy to gain but what else <laughs> Well, I think this is really, what you bring up is a really good point because, and it's, it, they should trust us, but they should also trust each other. Um, and, and know that like, my friend is not going to keep making a comment about it, you know, the next day and the next day. Um, and, and so that, and that's the part that we have to be patient. Um, and so some, like, we might think, okay, we can play one or two games and then go deeper, but that's the bit where actually sometimes if, if young people have had a difficult time at home or a difficult time in their neighborhood or something, that sometimes that trust, as you're saying, it takes a lot more time um, before you can overcome some of these things. And that's where sometimes we have to be um, with the goals. Sometimes we have to, to look at smaller pieces at a time, right? To say, you know, can we just, can we just laugh? Like, I wonder how long we can forget about the fear and play. Now the getting up in front of everybody, that part can happen later. The sharing something personable about yourself in front of the group, that can happen later. First, let's just find a way to laugh together, to be together, to enjoy our company. Um, and that what that does is it lays the foundation for any later sharing, for any later risk taking. But yeah, I think there's, you're right Rupa, there's no magic. There's no magic solution. Thank you. Because yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, so we've got one. Um, who can become a drama therapist? So uh, the training for drama therapy is similar to that for um, a counseling psychologist or another type of therapist. So you need that clinical training because the difference between like a drama teacher and a drama therapist is that the drama teacher uses learning goals. The drama therapist uses therapeutic goals. So you have to understand um, human psychology. In India, a lot of people will practice with a master's level. And a master's level in psychology is, is sufficient. And then you can go through a training program. So there's a number of different training programs and a lot of them are like postgraduate diplomas. So um, you've got people who are offering trainings in, in Bangalore at Smart Studio. Um, in Pune, um, Art Sphere and Soul Sphere offer trainings. 
And, um, and in Mumbai, you've got the um, Xavier has a postgraduate diploma. Um, so I, I don't know if that answers your question, but a part of that training process is facilitating groups and then getting feedback um, and have, going through supervision. So, okay, cool. Sweet, we answered the question. Um, I'm really excited about um, what we're all in this together um, is doing. So I appreciate uh, the Sakkal group for organizing this. And I think the idea of promoting um, mental health and well-being um, is really important. And I think now more than ever, this has been a really difficult year for a lot of people. And just because the vaccine comes doesn't mean that the problems that COVID has kind of exposed and, and um, made worse, those are not going to go away right away. And so being able to um, connect with one another, have positive and playful ways that help us rebuild our connections, rebuild ourselves, rebuild our communities, I think it's, it's going to be increasingly important. And I think anxiety um, is something that we talk about so much more now. Cause, and I'm thinking about, uh, about us, Rupa, and like the games that we would have played, you know, 11 years ago or whatever, um, and how, how things have changed. And I think that, that, the, that the world is more, uh, many people are more anxious now than they were 10 years ago. And so thinking about how, um, how can we respond to that call, respond to that need, um, and, and be creative and take good care of ourselves as we continue to kind of respond to this, to these issues. Um, and that's, that's where I want to just thank, um, thank Sakkal and the, um, we're in this together for the work that they're doing, um, to promote mental health, to, to do trainings for teachers, to do stuff with college students, um, to get there, to get out there into the, um, government schools and low fee private schools. And, and really support this work. So um, yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you, Ugan. So also we can part ways because Ivan can talk very well in Hindi. So yes, Dhanyawad. <laughs> Nahi, Shunya. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm going, to take this, I'm going to take one last question that came and then we'll wrap up for the day. So the question from an anonymous question is, um, what problems do drama therapists treat? And I think there's a lot of issues that drama therapists treat. So some people treat, um, you know, depression and anxiety and those kind of problems. Other people do things like working with end of life care for seniors or people who have chronic illnesses like cancer. There's people who work on um, eating disorders. Um, a lot of my work is around um, trauma recovery, um, violence prevention, and working around um, sexual assault prevention and sexual violence. So there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different things, ways that you can use drama therapy. Um, so again, it's, it's really about having that therapeutic goal in mind, just the way that a teacher would have a learning objective in mind as you're, as you're leading the process. Cool. Um, so thanks, thanks uh, for coming out today. I, I appreciate it. It was good to see you again, Rupa, and nice to meet you, Arlie. Thanks for playing along. Thank you so much. It was really nice to see you after a long time. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it won't be so long before I see you again next time. Yeah, I will. We'll catch up. Okay, yeah, have a great day. Bye. Yeah, bye, Arlie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye.